All right, gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Brunel, Mr. Brunel here, ready to get on board some theology. Today we're going to do the golden calf incident. Ruh -roh. Um, the Lord has been so good to the Israelites. He's provided for them. He's given them all they needed. And now they're worshiping idols. This is a problem. So uh, let's hop right into it. So today's objective, uh, we're going to be able to articulate the significance of the golden calf event. I'm going to give you a, uh, after, after, of course, describing uh, the golden calf event, you'll be able to do that. Uh, of course, looking for explanation and details on that. Uh, and then, of course, for homework, you got you prepared for the first um, answer of the exit ticket describing the golden calf uh, event. So uh, let's see. Go ahead and copy down that down in your notes, the objective and the exit ticket. And uh, let's uh, let's pray. It's always good to pray. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve to give and not to count the cost, to fight, not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, to save those knowing I do your will. Amen. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here's the objective and the exit ticket, if you need it. Let's ride. Remember that our unit goal, guys, we're trying to articulate the flight of Egypt, uh, being able to give descriptions and, uh, and certain explanations, as I've been providing for you. And uh, remember the essential question, how does the story of the flight of Egypt affect and model our spiritual life today? We're going to address that um, uh, right before the, the day before the exam. So the story so far. Um, so between the events of uh, the miracles and uh, this, uh, this idol worshiping, we've got a few things that happened. So in Exodus 18, Moses' father-in-law is going to uh, visit him and tells him, you know, hey, you're having to deal with, you know, he's basically, Moses is individually judging uh, you know, situations, you know, there's all, when you have a group of people, there's always going to be conflict and you need <clears throat> people to uh, lead a people, all right, organize them, make sure that everything that they're doing is just, right? And so he tells them, hey, appoint some judges. So um, he encourages him to do that. Exodus 19, that's the arrival at Mount Sinai, a very important uh, mount, um, very uh, symbolic mount, uh, which um, we'll keep coming back to and is, uh, becomes a great symbol uh, in the, in, in the uh, history of the scriptures. Exodus 20, uh, a key moment, and we're going to address this next class, uh, is God gives them the t gives Moses the Ten Commandments. So he goes to Mount Sinai, reflects, gives him uh, gives them the Ten uh, Commandments. Big key moment here uh, for uh, divine revelation. Uh, the Lord giving them the instructions to how to live a, a beautiful and flourishing life. Uh, so super, that's, uh, that's really exciting stuff. So we're going to explore that next class. So. Exodus 21 to 23, he gives other laws, so he's going to, you know, certain issues are surrounding justice, uh, rights of peoples, um, and also even ritual laws, too, so basically how to, um, how to do liturgy for them, right? How do, you, uh, how do you worship God properly? And there's certain laws and purity laws according, um, uh, relating to that, too. So um, in sixth grade, we won't really talk a whole lot of those, but hopefully in the future we'll be able to uh, address some of those and how those prefigure, uh, of course, our liturgy in the Mass now. Exodus 24, uh, this, co the new co this new covenant, right, uh, with the Ten Commandments and the new laws is confirmed um, between, of course, the Israelites and, and, uh, and God. And uh, symbolically, blood will be sprinkled uh, on the altar. Uh, and, and I believe on the people as well uh, as a symbol of their, uh, of, of their fidelity, of their basically saying yes to this great covenant. This new deal with the Lord. He will provide. Exodus 25 to 31, um, there's also given these instructions for the tabernacle. So the tabernacle is this, gonna, is this basically traveling tent that they're going to bring with as they get through, go through the desert, where they worship God, uh, where the Holy of Holies will be. So that'll be where the Ark of the Covenant is. So he's also given instructions for the Ark of the Covenant, um, what's to be put in the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, and as well as the priesthood instructions. Um, so basically, what kind of what kind of people the tribe the tribe of Levi are the only ones who can carry the you know ark that they need to transport it things like that. Uh, so we're going to get all these instructions from uh, from God on on this. So you don't have to write this down. This is just for some context as we move forward. So uh, this is what the tabernacle looks like. Um, so literally, kind of a tent here, uh, a space to to burn incense and burn sacrifices. Uh, you've got uh, the priest here who's incensing um, this. So, uh, and this is also a, you know, a depiction of what the tribes may have organized themselves uh, around the temple. The different because there's 12 tribes of Israelite of of, of Israel, the Israelites, um, and uh, of course the sons of uh, Jacob. 
So this is where the Ark of the Covenant would be, uh, the menorah, and, uh, and other uh, symbols that um, you, don't, you don't have to learn. Let's keep going. Uh, I've got this video. I'll put a link uh, in the description down below for this video on what the tabernacle uh, may have looked like. Okay, we're ready for our chant break already. Um, so let's uh, let's do it. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora, Mortis nostre. Amen. Let's keep going. So I'm going to do a little bit of reading uh, as we move into the golden calf incident. <laughs> so um, just uh, listen and follow along. The people make a gold calf. The people saw that a long time had passed and Moses had not come down from the mountain. So they gathered all around, they gathered around Aaron. They said to him, Moses, lead us out of Egypt. We do not know what has happened to him. So make us gods who will lead us. Oh, Moses led us out of Egypt, um, but we don't know what's happened to him. He's up in Sinai, obviously. So make us gods who will lead us. Aaron said to the people, take off the gold earrings that your wives, sons, and daughters are wearing. Bring them to me. So all the people took their gold earrings and brought them to Aaron. Aaron took the gold from the people. He melted it and made a statue of a calf. He finished it with a tool. Then the people said, Israel, these are your gods who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Rah, rah. Let's continue. Aaron saw all this. He built an altar before the calf. Then he made an announcement. He said, tomorrow there will be a special feast to honor the Lord. The people got up early next morning. They offered whole burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. The first the people sat down to eat and drink. They got up and had wild parties. And the Lord said to Moses, go down from this mountain. Your people, the people you brought out of the land of Egypt, have done a terrible sin. They have quickly turned away from the things I commanded them to do. They have made for themselves a calf of melted gold. They have worshipped the calf and offered sacrifices to it. The people have said, Israel, these are your gods who brought you out of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people. I know they are very stubborn people. So now do not stop me. I am so angry with them that I am going to destroy them. Then I will make you and your descendants a great nation. But Moses begged the Lord his God, Moses said, Lord, do not let your anger destroy your people. You brought these people out of Egypt with your great power and strength. Don't let the people of Egypt say, the Lord brought the Israelites out of Egypt, but he planned to kill them in the mountains and destroy them from the earth. So stop being angry. Don't destroy your people. Remember the men who served you, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You promised with an oath to them. You said, I will make your descendants as many as the stars in the sky. I will give your descendants all this land that I have promised them. It will be theirs forever. So the Lord changed his mind. He did not destroy the people he, as he had said he might. Mo then Moses went down the mountain. His, in his hands he had the two stone tablets with the agreement on them. Of course, the Ten Commandments. The commands were written on both sides of each stone, front and back. God himself had made the stones, and God himself had written the command, commands on the stones. Then Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting. He said to Moses, It sounds like war down in, down in the camp. Moses answered, it's not an army's shout of victory. It's not an army's cry of defeat. It is a sound of singing that I hear. When Moses came close to the camp, he saw the gold calf and dancing. He became very angry. He threw down the stone tablets which he was carrying. He broke them at the bottom of the mountain. Then he took the calf that the people had made. He melted it in the fire, and he ground the gold until it became powder. He threw the powder into the water, and he forced the Israelites to drink that water. Moses said to Aaron, Why? What did these people do to you? Why did you cause them to do such a terrible sin? Aaron answered, Don't be angry, Master. You know that these people are always ready to do wrong. The people said to, Mo to me, Moses led us out of Egypt, but we don't know what has happened to him. So make us gods who will lead us. So I told the people, Take off your gold jewelry. So they gave me gold. I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Surprise. Really? Moses saw that the people were acting wildly. He saw that Aaron had let them get out of control. Their enemies would laugh at them. So Moses stood at the entrance of the camp. He said, Let anyone who wants to follow the Lord come to me. And all the people from the family of Levi gathered around Moses. So just one of the families. Then Moses said to them, 
the Lord, the God of Israel, says this, Every man must put on his sword and go through the camp from one end to another. Each man must kill his brother, his friend, and his neighbor. The people from the family of Levi obeyed Moses. That day, about 3,000 of the people of Israel died. Then Moses said, Today you have been given for service to the Lord. You were willing to kill your own sons and brothers, and God has blessed you for this. The next day Moses told the people, You have done a terrible sin, but now I will go up to the Lord. Maybe I can do something so your sins will be removed. Then you will belong to God again. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, How terrible it is. These people have sinned horribly. They have made for themselves gods of from gold. Now forgive them of this sin. If you will not, then erase my name. Erase it from the book which you have written in the names of your people. But the Lord told Moses, I will erase from my book the names of the people who sinned against me. So now go, lead the people where I have told you. My angel will lead you. When the time comes to punish, I will punish them for their sin. So the Lord caused terrible things to happen to the people. He did this because of what they did with the calf um, Aaron had made. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A lot going on here. Uh, there's justice here. There's uh, there's just all kinds of insanity. So um, so basically, as you did for homework, um, what all, all I really need you to do about summarizing uh, this event is uh, that while waiting for Moses to uh, to uh, to come back from Mount Sinai, the Israelites asked Aaron to make them a god to worship out of gold. When Moses returned, he angrily smashed the Ten Commandments, destroyed the calf, and punished them. Um, and um, you might be thinking, like, wait, what? why did he grind it down to powder and make them drink the water? There are different inter interpretations on that. One of the ones I read uh, was that apparently it was just so, uh, basically, as, you know, as a punishment, it, it, they would feel basically, they would feel gross, uh, basically feel um, a physical disgust uh, towards uh, what they did wrong. Um, so that's a, that's one interpretation. And then you might be thinking, oh my gosh, he asks him to like kill all these people. God is God is asking him to kill all these people. Like what is going on here? Um, but remember guys, um, the consequences, the wages of sin uh, is death, right? Um, so this is, this is a, you know, not just a literal like, gosh, there was like a slaughtering of all these people. Uh, but remember, it also represents uh, the soul and the death of the soul that happens when we, uh, when, when we, uh, when we turn our, turn away from, uh, turn away from God. So, just make sure you have this down in your notes, and uh, we'll continue onward. And well, and also, right, the Levi, the, the the tribe of Levi, those are the ones that gather around Moses. They will, they they are the ones who become the priestly class. Uh, that basically all the priests have to come. The priests for um, Israel, different than of course the current priesthood of Jesus Christ. Um, they're all going to come from this tribe. Now, uh, to the objective question, guys. So. Um, significance of the golden calf event. The key thing you need to know about the golden calf event, right? Teaches us the danger of putting anything first before God, right? So they had uh, abandoned God. That's like, hey, this is this is the idol. This is the God that brought us from um, out of the land of Egypt. Um, so it teaches the danger of putting anything first before God. It's not just like, oh, you know, you think you might think, oh, it's easy. Like I'm just not gonna, oh, I'm not gonna worship an idol. Pff, I be like I believe in God, right? Um, but you have to know, guys. It's uh, it's deeper than just that. It reminds us to remain faithful. Uh, to God's commandments and to avoid anything that leads us uh, leads us away from Him. So even uh, things like money, success, fame, honor, food, pleasure, all these things can become idols for us. Uh, so we have to be on guard. So I think of you know people who can get obsessive over over gambling. Uh, it could be uh, maybe obsessed with like stocks, right? Like you 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 begin to worship like oh my stocks are gonna go up. I'm gonna check it obsessively every day. Um, these are the things that can distract us uh, from the one true God, right? Uh, or even, you know, I think of, um, you know, success, right? Sometimes there's a lot of pressure with uh, uh, when you're in school, like, oh, I'm going to be, I got to be successful, got to be successful. It's like, um, you know, success is good, right? Uh, but it should, is it the first thing? No, it, should, it can't be the first thing, right? Uh, first and foremost is the relationship with God. Uh, and then, of course, flowing uh, from that. Um, you know, doing great things uh, in the world for God's glory. Absolutely, you can you can totally do that. You can totally do great things with that. Um, making a lot of money, you know, that's uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Uh, but uh, you know, it can't be it can't be our one other goal. Um, but you know, may being able to or order that money, uh, organize that money, and give it you know uh, to things which glorify God. Uh, that's um, 
that's a beautiful thing. That's why you know the church asks us to, to donate, right? To to to, serve, to help the poor with that, and you can do a tremendous amount of good with money. So, right, and it's not that any of these things are necessarily bad things, right? But uh, right, it's when we put them uh, uh, before God, that's when things get uh, issues. Uh, that's when we get issues, you know. Uh, glorifying, you know, we should if we have if we're if we gain honors, you know, from people, right? You know, glorify God with that. So, um, please make sure this is uh, so. I need you to. To know for the uh, significance for the exit ticket. Well, guys, that's it. Um, so make sure you take the exit ticket with me if you miss class. And uh, this has been Brunel on board signing off.